All right, so now it is time to push this up a gear. We're about to go turbo speed on this because we're about to push it to the next level. Uh, you know, we're playing this game right now and there's an obvious sense of danger that's missing from it, correct? Like, there's only so much cherry picking that we can do before we get bored as a fox, you know? So, it's time to make enemies. <laughs> this is where things get fun. So, what I want for you is that I want you to go ahead and set up a basic... For now, we'll make a frog enemy. We'll make it, and I just want you to have a basic sprite sitting around, maybe on this branch, perhaps. Uh, you Or whatever you have that's equivalent. It doesn't really matter, because I know that you made your own level. Uh, just set them up, make them like you make everything else, and get them just so that the basics are done. In case you didn't start already, now's the time for that. <laughs> Alright, so, right click over here, we're going to create an empty object, we're going to make sure that these are all zeroed out because it just wants to randomly make things. Uh, we're going to name this into the frog. We're going to go into sunny land, artwork, sprites, enemies, there's a eagle, frog, possum. Totally want to make this possum eventually, but for now I said to do the frog. There's an idle for the frog, and then there's a jumping animation for the frog that has the jumping and uh, falling once more. For now, we're just gonna go in here and set the frog up with add component sprite render. We're gonna make sure that that is on the entity level. We're going to go ahead and preemptively change this to pixels per unit to 16 because we're used to that by now. And we're going to go over here and drag this over to the frog and do that completely wrong. <laughs> drag this over to the sprite render and suddenly we should be able to see a frog somewhere. But we can't because it's in the wrong spot. Okay. And I'm going to put it over here on my tree branch. I'm going to add a component to it. We're going to have a box collider 2D. Make sure that the shape matches up a little bit. Now with uh, enemies in general, you have to think about how it's going to work out for the player, right? There are two things here. One, when you're, we're going to have it so that a uh, player can jump on the enemy, right? So we want it to feel like, like uh, you know, uh, if you're jumping on the enemy, you're actually jumping on him, you're landing on him. If you actually do it, it happens, right? So the problem is if we put the, the box collider out here, it's happening right here and right here, which might be okay for the player because of the speed the fox is moving at and everything. It also makes it so that the enemy... Because if you're not jumping on him and he happens to get you, he'll actually get you out here as well. He'll actually collide with you right here and here and he can hurt you. And that doesn't feel good to the player. It feels unfair. So just to be on the safe side, we're going to go a little something like this for that. But it's up to you on how you want the game to feel. You just got to think about things like that when you're, when you're setting things up. Like collisions and stuff. Alright, so we quickly set up a quick little frog on here. We're going to hit play, run through these cherries real fast, and boom, we can run right into that frog. Awesome. Now that we have the frog on there, we probably want to have a rigid body 2D so that he can fall and rise and all that other cool stuff. Time now to make it so that frog can hurt us <laughs> so that we can kill him and do some other things. First thing first, let's do the killing of the frog. So right now we have the frog untagged. For a challenge, I want you to tag him as an enemy. All right, really fast, if you go over here, you can click down here, you see that we have no tag that says enemy on it, so we hit add tag, we hit this plus button right here, we type in enemy. You remember whether you could, you capitalize that or not, because that is really important in the future. I recommend that if you capitalize one of them, you capitalize all of them. If you don't capitalize one of them, you don't capitalize all of them. You gotta be consistent so that you just know what you do inside the game. And now we want to go over here. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about what the game uses. If you want to, you can use on collision enter 2D 
and it should be passing in something as well. Uh, if you had the auto uh, finish on there, it will show you. I'm actually gonna pull up the API real quick so that we can see it. There we go, it's supposed to pull in a collision 2D, which is not the same thing as a collider 2D. I know that might be surprising. I'm surprised by it, but it, it's a different thing. It has different information inside of it. Make sure that you put, pass in collision 2D and you can call it whatever you want. I like to call mine other. If you go in here, you put in if other dot tag equals equals enemy. Remember we capitalized it earlier. Game object dot tag. All right. And you can uh, find enemy on there. All right. I'm surprised it actually doesn't let you just get the tag like it does on Collider 2D. That's very inconsistent of them to not uh, have that ability, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So we go with the collision dot other, uh, so other dot game object dot uh, tag. We check to see if that's enemy. And then from there, we can go over and we know that we're uh, hitting an enemy at this point. If we hit an enemy, we want to do different things, but for now, we're just gonna say destroy other dot game object in order to test the function out. Now, there's gonna be problems with this methodology that I will point out. Over here and boom, nothing happens. That wasn't supposed to happen. Did I forget to tag him? Frog, yeah, I forgot to add the enemy tag. That's something that you should always check. It's the most common error I make, I swear. And I think that's, that's true for other people as well, but I don't know. So you jump over here and boom, you run into him and he disappears in a quick flash. We don't like that though, because if you just run into the enemy, that shouldn't work. This isn't, I mean, that's not how Mario works. You run into an enemy and you get hurt, right? So we want to do something pretty similar with the, uh, with the player here. How do we do that? Well, we already invented this really cool state machine inside of here that makes it so that we know when we're doing things. And we know that the only time that we should be able to really hurt an enemy is when we're falling. You're fall falling on their head, right? So, and we go, and state equals equals state dot falling, right? So now we know that if we're in this falling state, we actually go on and kill him. Uh, otherwise, we don't kill him. Makes a lot of sense, right? Oh, nothing's happening. You're jumping, falling, he's gone. But we're gonna up the game a little bit here. Now, I'm actually gonna take this right out because there's actually gonna be different things that happen depending on how we run into that enemy. So we're gonna say, we're gonna put that back in over here. If state equals equals state dot falling, then we destroy the enemy. else we get hurt right other dot game object dot transform dot position i know that is uh, uh that's a lot right there right and we want the dot x right if that creature's position so what we're doing here is we're taking the collision information we're going okay collision what are you connected to oh this game object right here the frog then we go okay your transform which is this right here this component what's the x position now you gotta remember x is determined whether you're in the left or the right here right so now we know okay you have this x position right uh it's important to note that his transform is a, a larger number than our transform on the x right so the x the x value in his transform is a larger value than anything to his left and smaller value than anything to his right correct so 37.77 is of course a larger number than uh negative 2.45 has a higher value and if we were on his right we would be at like 40 ish and we would have the higher value right so you can actually tell the direction based off that value so we're going to say if that value is greater than transform dot position dot x, which is my x value, the player's x value, so my transform that position that dot x. 
if it's greater than this is where comments come in handy uh, if his position is greater than mine that would mean that he is to my right enemy is to my right therefore I should be damaged and move left right else else then automatically the only other option is that he is uh, enemy is to my left therefore I should be damaged and move right okay now we already know how to move the character by adding forces right we do this through the rb.velocity so uh, for what i want you to do as a challenge so i want you to make we'll make the variable first and then after that we're going to mess with it so we're going to serialize this build we're going to make private a float of hurt force we'll call it i guess it doesn't really matter and we'll start off with like mm, 10 f ish and we're going to make a whole new state called hurt. So for now, we're not going to use the hurt state. We're going to figure this out. So enemy is on my right. Therefore, I should be damaged and move left. So what I want you to do at this point is I want you to add that velocity and make it happen. So make it so like when you run into them that you actually have that happen. All right. So you go rb.velocity equals new vector 2. And we're going to use, and because we're moving left, we're going to use negative hurt force. And of course, we're going to go rb dot velocity dot y, uh, yeah dot y. And we're going to keep that the same. And you can just simply copy this, and you can paste it, paste it, and you can just take off the negative in front of hurt force. So we have 10 in there right now. We can go test this out really fast. So if we're in the falling animation, it won't run this. It'll actually just kill him. But if we're not, oh, that's interesting. It worked for a second, but then it didn't work anymore. So right now what's going on is that this the, the game is continuously, because uh, we still have input inside of here, the thing's uh, resetting the uh, the movement. So what it's doing is it's taking this uh, this right here and it's basically overriding the velocity. So the hurt force is going put in put in because we have direction as well. It's changing it up. It's uh, it's overriding this with this. So we do need to put in states in here and to make it happen. So that's good that we know that now. So we need some way to make it so that unless we are not moving from being damaged anymore, we can't actually have any input happen, right? That's the big thing. Inside the update right here, we can actually just put in a something here. If state does not equal state dot hurt, then movement can occur, right? Now, if we're in this already, then state already equals state dot hurt, right? We can take off this is happening and to my right because we troubleshot already and we already know what's going on there. Now, if we go down to this, because this right here figures out if we're running or idling or anything like that, right? But it only works if we're jumping, falling, and so on. So what we want instead is, before we fi figure out if we're running or anything like that, we want to say if state equals equals state dot hurt, then we want to check to see if rb dot velocity dot x is less than 0.1 f kind of like when we check to see if we're actually idling, right? Then we can go back to state equals state dot idle, right? So basically this will add the hurt force to them, right? 
Oh, but if we're in a negative, it won't work. So we need the absolute value of this. So math f, because if we're moving to the left, we're, we have a we have an absolute value, right? So absolute value of this x right here. So this will check to see if we have we're, how, if we're close to zero. Basically, we want to be as close to zero as possible. And then if it is, we're going to go into idle. Otherwise, we're just going to be hurt and we can't move. And then while we're hurt, movement doesn't work, as you can see in here, right? We're going to make this anyway so that uh, because we want them to animate correctly. So now, every time we run into them, boom, we get knocked back quite a bit. I think that we're all set with this right now in terms of uh, the basics of enemy interaction. I mean, we got to make the enemy, we got to give them some artificial intelligence and let them move around and make things happen here and in, in the near future. But for now, I think that's pretty good. Um, I do want to add one more function to it. We'll do it in this one. It's going to be a longer video. <laughs> so one more thing that we want to add is a cool little effect of when he, you land on his head, you actually jump a little bit more, you know, and extends your jump basically. So <clears throat> what we can do for this is right now we have the jump happening right here, right? This is all one, basically what happens when you jump, right? So inside of here, we'll just go private void jump there you go and then we're going to cut this and we're going to paste this right here save it and we're going to put jump in here so it does exactly the same thing that it was doing before and when we're killing an enemy when we destroy him we're just going to say jump to the and then if we go back into Unity, push play, run through them cherries, get our score up, run over to this pansy, show him who's boss. Ah! And to the, we have jump all uh, function all of a sudden. Actually, I don't know why he didn't update back to uh, the jump animation when that happened. That should have happened as well. Oh, because right now in the animator, we never had it so that the falling animation has a way to go back to the jump animation. So if we had to make a transition, click on this arrow right here, hit the condition there for states is equals to whatever this one is, two. So if the state equals two, we go back to jump now. Man, I really thought we were never going to need that. Look at me. See, made a liar out of my past self. Hit the play button this time. We run through these cherries. Jumping, falling, jumping, woo, look at that. We got ourselves fancy. Now we have this like nice little game feel to it. Things work out. We can run up to him and get hurt as well. If we're feeling a little masochistic as our fox self today. Run over to him real fast. Boom. And, ah, oh, there we go. That feels good. It feels good to jump off his head and get some momentum off there and have something happen. All right, so please, if you liked this video, hit that like button below, hit that subscribe button as well, and hit that bell notification so you can always know when I'm uploading new videos, which is going to be pretty often if you can't already tell by my upload schedule. I like to make my videos in bulk and then upload them every single day until I run out. And while I'm uploading them, like that that batch, the batch of videos I have right now, I'm already on the verge of making a whole new batch of videos that uh, I will be releasing every single day again once they're complete. So let me know what you want to see, what you want to learn. You want me to go into 3D? You want me to stick with 2D? You want some multiplayer action? I don't know what you guys want. Let me know. All right, leave me some comments and uh, feedback below. Thank you very much. I hope you have the best day.